Well, the last thing I did was compare Minsky as a flowchart model to its uh, far more developed rivals as a flowchart model, and I think it didn't come off too badly in the comparison. Uh, but as I said at the end of that video, the main thing that makes Minsky different is the Godley table, which is our way of building models of the financial sector, exploiting the capacity of double entry bookkeeping to make sure you keep things balanced. So just double click on side this table here to bring up the table, and you can see that I've defined an extremely simple model here, <coughs> uh, which has, first of all, banks lending money to firms, firms paying interest to banks, firms repaying the debt, work, uh, firms paying wages to workers, workers consuming, and bankers purchasing intermediate goods or only buying the odd Lamborghini, that sort of thing. And over here, I've defined what each of these variables are. So I've us using the the tool I showed you earlier, by right-clicking, I can then copy the variable, bring it over here, do the same for this. And what I've done in each of these cases is saying, that, uh, again, it's an incredibly simple model just to illustrate, A, that it works, and B, why this approach works better than flowcharting. So my loans uh, grow proportionally to the current level of lending. <coughs> Pardon me, new lending is proportional to the current level of loans. And there's a time lag going on here, which I've got a value of 7 to meaning effectively that loans double every seven years. Interest on loans, of course, is just the rate of interest on loans times the outstanding level of loans. I've set that at 4%. Uh, the time lag for repaying loans, I've set at 10 years. So that the difference between the seven years for new loans and 10 years for repaying means loans grow over time and therefore money in the economy grows. I've just slightly elaborated on what I've shown earlier by having uh, the amount of money in the firms sector determining how much goes to wages because the firm sector is effectively the productive section of the economy. So the amount of money turning over in the firm sector is GDP. And what I've done here is say, well, let's imagine that the stock of money that they, the firm sector has borrowed into existence from the banks, uh, is, let's say it's I start with 100 million or 100 billion, whatever, 100 something. Uh, if that turns over, and what is the figure I have here, uh, every one, uh, three tenths of a year, then GDP will be on average 3.1 times, 3.3 times uh, the average level of amount of money in the firm sector, which is growing because of the borrowing up here. And then if wages are, in this case I've said 70% of GDP, that's what wages work out to be. Now workers' consumption I simply have related to the amount of money in the workers' bank accounts, and what I've got there is a value of 0.04, means 25 times a year, effectively they turn over the money in their accounts, so they can last roughly a fortnight without running out of money if there's no additional inflow, whereas much wealthier bankers can last a year. So that gives me my overall system. I can hit the simulate button. And I'll just before I do that, this is going to show the loans. The red the black line here will be loans. The red line will be the amount of money in the firm sector, which of course will be less than loans because some money's gone across both to workers for wages and for to bankers for repayment of debt and then come back as consumption and have made good purchases by both. But the overall rule is that the level of loans must be equal to the sum of deposits. So here's another little feature of Minsky I've mentioned but haven't shown before, I think. We allow you to have multiple inputs to binary operators like plus and minus. So this basically says uh, the, the, this amount here will be loans minus the sum of firms plus workers plus safe. And that should be zero. And I've set the ranges up here because when you're doing a, a simulation and you're, you're running a non-linear simulation, you will get a tiny level of drift around that very, very close to zero. It'll look like a, a pattern if you haven't been, if you don't actually know the range of the graphs, it'll look like there's a difference. In fact, there's like a difference of the power of 10 to the minus 14, that sort of thing. And then down here I'm showing the actual flows of GDP and wages, and they'll be substantially higher than the amount of money uh, outstanding in the, in the sum of the deposit because of that turnover factor. So let's simulate, off we go. The most important thing is this is a total flat line, so I know the accounting is correct. Okay, so that's having done this using a Godley table. What I'm now going to do, I'll save it before I do it, is delete the table. So my logic's completely gone. I've just got these things defined. Stop and go back again, and absolutely nothing happens. So I've got the definitions, but I'm not actually using them. So I'm going to now build the same model using the flowchart side of Minsky. Now I. Well, I, I managed to do something like this, a simpler version, frankly, um, about 10 or 9 or 10 years ago when I first started building this, this approach. Uh, of course, it's far easier with the Godley table, and it's even easier if the Godley table's already generated the mass for you, as I've done here. And I'm simply going to rep replicate that 
in flowchart format. So I want to have that equation. So the rate of change of, I need to now have firms, loans, safe and workers defined as variables. Of course I've already got them over here. Let's just make that a bit, actually let's make it a bit smaller so I can actually see them. I hope you can see them on screen when I run the video. Okay, so firms are here, so copy that, bring it over here, and I now want to add an integral to that. Oh, pardon me, not to... Um, ah, looks like I can't actually do it with the, with the way we've redefined the program to make it locked to, a ver to an integral. Let's see if I can actually do this, and let's see if I can toggle variable binding. Okay, I've done that, and delete that. Now I can actually say that I now have an integral going to firms. Looks like, oh, I'm caught by my own, um, not cleverness, but the design rules were put onto a, onto a system that you can't actually have uh, a variable in a godly table having an input. So, what do I do? Okay, I think I'll stop at that point. Redefine, recreate new variables with similar names and come back in the next half of the video. Okay, here goes attempt two with that uh, idea. So what I've done now is I've exploited the fact that the variables in Minsky are case sensitive to define firms, loans, workers and safe uppercase and replace all those where they were at the previous definition. So I'm really now to try to build this all together. So what I have to have here is a summation and uh, in each case I need a summation and a subtraction variable. Let's just bring four of them down. I'm actually hoping I can generate a bug here to show Russell if I'm lucky. Hopefully now like I probably won't be. Okay, so now I've had that, so I now have the variable I need to copy here. Lending is a positive, and so is consumption by workers, and so is consumption by bankers. So they're all wired to the positive of that particular input and wire them up. while interest repayment and wages ah, repay, where's repay? there and wages they're all negatives so that's to find the firm's variable I'd have to move these around a bit. I didn't, I didn't uh, anticipate that I'd get jammed up like that. The, the vertical arrangement of something in Minsky that is unusual compared to other programs, they can just stack them all because we have this multiple input approach to um, uh, the uh, other variables. So this is just lend minus repay, it's pretty easy. So copy that and repay, copy that, wire that up. And then workers is uh, wages minus consumption, so copy that. Obviously I've left out workers receiving interest payments on their uh, deposit, but that's just to save time. It doesn't make any substantive difference to include them receiving interest payments. That's workers. And then finally we have interest minus bank. Okay, for, for bankers, so copy that. Unless a bug turns up here, that should reproduce the equations of the system. I'll just save as and call this flowchart 02 in case anything goes wrong. And then simulate. Okay, I've done something wrong there. Now, in fact, the model actually ran is good because I wasn't sure that it would without a a bug turning up, but somehow I've got some of my signing one that wasn't deliberate, it just happened somehow. So what have I done wrong? Let's just actually stop that. Simulate it again, yep, still the same effect. So firms, workers and safe are somehow going to be much, much larger. I didn't actually intend illustrating this, but I intended getting it right first time round and then talking about it later. But clearly I've dealt something wrong. Hang on a sec. Uh, let's see, I've got a What's the initial value for loans? Let's see if it's actually in the initial value. Edit. 
that's 100. Initial value for firms now shown as a positive. This stage also 100. Initial value for workers, 0. Initial value for safe, 0. Loans, 0. OK. So I just stop it and hit a pause step button and see what's happening. And go five steps forward. This is now 101. And this is 91. It's 9 plus. Yeah. OK, well, somehow I've got to have a logical error inside here. And uh, I'm already wondering where the hell it would be. And I'll just quickly do a save and see if I can come back to that. But the point being that that's why working with a godly table makes it much easier to work out what you're doing. Because on this one, it works first time. And the reason I know it's going to work is that the sum of all the rows is correct, is as zero as it should be. So I've given the right sign to different elements in the, in, in the whole system. And the godly table gives me a check that I don't get with the flowchart software. So I might try doing that again from the ground up and then continuing with this illustration with one more uh, development later. Silly me, as my little niece says, I had a plus key there. That's what's going wrong. Let's just delete that and bring up a minus. And now wire that together. Let's see, interest minus bank function. OK, stop and simulate. Ah, great. What else have I done wrong? Shit. Well, that was fairly easy. You may have spotted it now yourself for looking at the video, and I didn't. I hadn't wired up interest to the top of the uh, minus block. Now, having it all, all together, having used the, pardon me, the maths generated by the previous Godly system as a cheat sheet, I finally managed to make the model work overall. Uh, now, I want to illustrate, well, I've already illustrated by accident. There's nothing that will stop me putting together a model here, which the program lets me run, but for which the signs of various financial flows are wrong. And that's one of the major problems with trying to use this flowchart approach versus the, de -god the godly table. That's one element. The other one I want to show is let's uh, save this to make sure it's saved. Bring up the, uh, the godly table one. Now, having done that, here's, by the way, just take remember the set of equations here. Of course, this is a very stylized model. So let's actually make it a bit more realistic. Let's say, as well as having firms here and workers, you also have capitalists. I could have said shareholders, but let's be, let's be with the 99% here. OK, so capitalists in there. Well, of course, what happens with them? Well, for a start, they're going to be receiving dividends, which is going to be a flow of div from here, meaning minus div over here, and then they're also going to consume. Uh, and I'll just make this very, very simple, but let's just say so they're going to have co and underscore k from here and minus c o n s underscore k here. Now we can also have the firm sector issuing equities. Part of why it's funding its uh, activities. So this can be, uh, in that case, what's going to happen is there's going to be the, the money's going to come out of the capitalist account and go into the firm's account to enable them to do other things apart from just repayment. And then we might also, for example, um, we might just have a, uh, a fire sector uh, where the capitalist speculates. So we might have them uh, uh, having spec going from here across to over here. OK, that'll do. Now, having done all that, let's just save that with a different name. And now let's see what the equations look like for that. Come over here and take a look at it. Now, we're not actually naming the constants properly here at the moment. A little 
uh, problem that Ross has to has to work on. But now let's take a look at our equations and what have we got in terms of flow equations. We now have an initial one, two, a one, two, three, four, probably another page down here, let's see. Okay, capitalists here, um, fire sector growing with speculation. I've got to have to change that as well. Firms with uh, one, two, three extra terms inside there, etc., etc. Uh, but I know the logic is right. I know there's no errors inside there. Now, if I wanted to do that in the flowchart version, I'd need to bring in an additional integral equation, which I'd call in this case capitalists. And then I'd need to say, well, yeah, what are they going to be getting as inputs? Well, they're going to have dividends coming in over here. So we'd need uh, a variable called dividends, the flow, of course. So a plus for that, and I think it, I think I can stop pretty rapidly. Uh, the question I've now got to whack this somewhere down here. So where do I whack it? I think it goes inside here. Is a that's a negative, isn't it? So I've got to wire it to negative down here. Uh, so that goes over there. I think you can see the problem. Even in terms of physical layout, the flowchart system doesn't enable you to handle this need to put elements in two locations at least. Four if you start looking at uh, two sets of banks, central bank and, and, and two private banks where you've got ex uh, different parts of the um, social system having their accounts, money in different bank accounts. It just becomes far too complicated to keep track of the signs to make sure you're right. And the program would happily let me simulate something which actually contained a financial error, which the, ta the table, yes I can do it, but it warns me straight away by pointing out the sum of the rows is not zero. So that's why this little icon matters so much in what we're doing, which is all directed at trying to build a framework for monetary macroeconomics. And I'll finish on that note. The great tragedy of economics is that it spent a century trying to model capitalism as if banks, debt and money don't exist or don't have any impact on capitalism. And obviously the onus of proof is on somebody who wants to assert as extreme a statement as that, which in my opinion is a bit like saying birds don't need wings to fly. And clearly the financial crisis is evidence that that assertion was false. You have to include bank debt and money to understand capitalism. That's what Minsky is all about. And uh, I hope you'll join me on the journey of starting to build those models and finally building a realistic monetary macroeconomics.